In this video lecture, we're going to learn about the solubility of group 2 hydroxides and sulfates and the factors that affect the solubility of group 2 hydroxides and sulfates. So I'm going to first discuss hydroxides. Now, if you talk about group 2 hydroxides, then magnesium hydroxide is very, very slightly soluble. It's very slightly soluble and it, it has a pH of almost uh, 7, between 7 and 8. It's uh, slightly soluble. It only uh, produces very few OH ions. Calcium hydroxide is partially soluble. It is significantly, the solubility increases significantly compared to magnesium hydroxide. Strontium hydroxide is soluble. It's very soluble. And barium hydroxide is even more soluble. So what we can uh, state is that the general trend is that as you uh, move down the group, the solubility of group 2 hydroxides, it increases. Similarly, if we talk about sulfates, then uh, magnesium sulfate, calcium sulfate, strontium sulfate, and barium sulfate, the solubility would uh, decrease as you move down the group. Magnesium sulfate is very soluble, whereas calcium sulfate, the solubility decreases, it's partially soluble. Strontium sulfate is even more insoluble, and barium sulfate is very, very insoluble. So as you move down the group, they become less soluble. So what, there's one anomaly that is, that the solubility of hydroxide increases, they become more soluble as you move down the group, but the solubility of sulfates, it actually decreases as you move down the group. Now before moving on discussing solubility, I'm going to first explain to you what the entire process of dissolving an ionic substance is. Now the first thing is you have an, a giant ionic lattice. This is what a crystal of an ionic substance would look like where you would have positive ions, bonded to negative ions which would be attracted to positive ions so it's going to be one big giant ionic lattice and uh, there would be ionic bonds between the positive and negative ions and over here there are water molecules remember water has one oxygen so this big atom is oxygen and it has two hydrogens the oxygen side has a slight negative charge whereas the hydrogen side has a slight positive side so you have these water molecules and if i try to dissolve the first thing is i'm going to stir vigorously whenever i try to dissolve a salt in in a water and try to make a solution i would try to vigorously stir it the purpose of stirring is that this giant ionic lattice would break so this is step one that the ionic lattice breaks so as you can see in this diagram over here you can see the positive and negative ions they're breaking apart and this is my first step that the that the giant ionic lattice breaks now this process is going to be it's going to be endothermic because it would require energy since you're breaking the ionic lattice and whenever bonds are broken that requires energy so so that's the first thing we're going to crush uh, this giant ionic lattice this crystal and we're going to break it into pieces and we're going to stir this vigorously in the water molecules in this uh, in this liquid water over here now the second step is that once the ionic lattice has been broken and the and the positive and negative ions because of my vigorous stirring uh, and the amount of force that i'm using the ionic lattice and the ions scatter and once the ions scatter they're going to mix with the water molecules so in the next step uh, you can see this diagram over here where you can see that the positive and negative, the ionic lattice, the giant ionic lattice has broken down and the positive and negative ions are now scattered in liquid water. And once they are scattered in liquid water, what would happen is that the liquid water molecules will be attracted to these uh, negative ions. So, for example, there would be strong force of attraction between the negative ions and the water molecules. Remember, water is a polar molecule. So the hydrogens are, have a slight positive charge and the oxygen in the water molecule has a slight negative charge. So, so the hydrogens are going to attract the negative ions whereas the oxygens are going to attract the positive ions. So there's, there's going to be very strong force of attraction between the positive ions and water molecules. So these red dotted lines show those forces of attraction. The negative ions would be attracted to the hydrogens in the water molecule. So uh, uh, as you can see, the positive ions are attracted to the oxygen in the water molecule. So you have these strong force of attraction between the positive ions and the positive and negative ions and the water molecules. So let me draw a few more forces of attraction between positive ions attracted to the oxygen molecule. Uh, the negative ions would be attracted to uh, the hydrogens in the water. So there would be strong force of attraction. So the next step is 
Once the ions scatter, they would end up forming and they're going to form new bonds with water molecules. So this is step two. New bonds between water and uh, the ions, the scattered ions are formed. And remember, whenever there's a force of attraction that is being formed or a bond that is being formed, that step would be exothermic. It would release energy. You don't have to do work. All the work would be done by the ions and the molecules themselves. So the second step is exothermic. So uh, repeating the entire process, the first step is that you need to break the lattice and you need to scatter all the ions. So that's an endothermic process. And the next step is that once the ions are scattered, the, those ions would end up forming new bonds with water molecules, as you can see in this diagram over here, the positive and negative ions are now attracting the water molecules and they're forming new bonds. I'm now going to describe this entire process that we discussed in slightly more technical terms. Uh, so the first thing is when you're dissolving something and I'm going to pick the example of magnesium hydroxide. So let's say I am trying to dissolve magnesium hydroxide, which is an ionic substance. So it's a solid crystal lattice. And uh, the first thing is I'm going to uh, if I dissolve it, the overall reaction would be that it's going to form MgOH2 aqueous. So it's going to be Mg2 plus aqueous the ions would dissociate in uh, in uh, when they form a solution and there would be two hydroxide ions in aqua state when it dissolves now this uh, particular reaction the enthalpy change for this reaction is called the it's called the enthalpy standard enthalpy of solution if it's done under standard conditions so this is standard enthalpy of solution so magnesium hydroxide a solid ionic substance you dissolve it in water and it ends up uh, forming Mg2 plus aqueous and OH minus 1 aqueous ions. Now I'm going to split this process in two steps as we have discussed and as shown in the diagrams above. So the first step is that I'm going to try and break the ionic lattice. So MgOH2 is a solid ionic lattice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it into ions. So it's going to break down into Mg2 plus gaseous ions before dissolving. Uh, I'm vigorously stirring so the lattice is breaking and two OH minus one gaseous ions. So that's my first step. And since aqueous is there, I'm going to write aqueous as it is. I'm going, because the, the this term aqueous is not doing anything in this reaction. Now this process is that I'm trying to break MgOH2 lattice and breaking it into gaseous ions. Now this is referred to as lattice enthalpy, but the negative lattice enthalpy since uh, so this is the negative of lattice enthalpy because according to the definition of lattice enthalpy, in lattice enthalpy, a lattice is formed. So the arrow's direction should have been the other way around. But since the arrow is uh, going in the opposite direction and we are actually not forming the lattice but breaking the lattice. So I'm, I've added this minus sign, sign because I'm going in the opposite direction. Now the second step is that I have gaseous ions and I'm going to convert those gaseous ions into aqueous ions. So, so my Mg2 plus gaseous and OH minus uh, 1 gaseous ions are converted into aqueous ions. So this is my next step and this is called uh, the enthalpy of hydration. So this is my enthalpy delta H hydration of mg2 plus mg2 plus gaseous ions end up forming bonds with water molecule and then they end up forming mg2 plus aqueous so this is enthalpy of hydration of mg2 plus and plus it's also twice the enthalpy of hydration of oh ions since two oh ions gaseous are getting converted into aqua science. Now this Hess cycle that I've drawn is exactly the same that I've discussed previously. The first step was that the lattice was broken. So this is the negative of lattice enthalpy. I'm basically breaking the ionic lattice. So that's my first step and gaseous ions are being formed. And then in the next step, those gaseous ions are con getting converted into aqua science. So those gaseous ions are getting surrounded by water molecules and they are bonding and attracting water molecules and they, they are mixing with water. So they're getting converted into aqueous ions. And this is exactly what I've shown in this cycle. 
uh, as you can see the first step was that MgOH2 was a solid ionic lattice and I broke that lattice into gaseous ions so it formed Mg2 plus gaseous ions and 2OH minus 1 gaseous ions and in the next step uh, they bonded with water molecules and they ended up forming aqueous ions. So this is technically the enthalpy of hydration where a gaseous ion gets converted into aqueous ions. And this overall reaction was the enthalpy of solution. Now based on this we can come up with a relationship and that is using the Hess law that one path is equal to the second path the alternate path as long as the reactants and the products are, are exactly the same so your enthalpy of solution this is your path one going from magnesium hydroxide solid uh, and getting converted into magnesium hydroxide aqueous ions uh, this is enthalpy of solution the enthalpy of this reaction is called enthalpy of solution and this path should be equal to the second path over here that I've drawn uh, that it's, it should be equal to minus lattice enthalpy, you're breaking the lattice and then you're forming bonds with water molecules which is enthalpy of hydration. So, so I, can, I can make a relationship and write an equation which would be that my enthalpy of solution equals the negative of lattice enthalpy. I'm breaking the lattice enthalpy over here. So so I'm going in the opposite direction. So it's minus lattice enthalpy plus this is the enthalpy of hydration. So I'm going to add that. So plus enthalpy of hydration of the of the gaseous ions that are formed and getting converted, and I'm going to convert them into aqueous ions. So this is enthalpy of hydration. So this over here is the relationship that I can come up with. Then my enthalpy of solution is equal to minus lattice enthalpy plus the enthalpy of hydration. Now one thing that needs to be noted about uh, this relationship is that uh, if your enthalpy of solution, your overall enthalpy when you're dissolving a substance, if it comes out to be negative, so if your enthalpy of solution, delta H solution, comes out to be negative that means that it comes out to be exothermic then uh, it's most likely it's more likely to be soluble the substance would dissolve easily which basically means that it's going to dissolve easily because it doesn't require energy that the entire process of dissolving is actually releasing energy so it's more likely soluble and it's going to be more soluble at lower temperatures So you don't have to give uh, the particular process energy. If you're dissolving a substance and the enthalpy of solution comes out to be negative, exothermic, it's more likely soluble. Vice versa, if the enthalpy of solution comes out to be positive, that means it requires energy, then it's more likely to be insoluble. And it would become more soluble uh, if the temperature is high. So it's going to be uh, solubility would increase since it's an endothermic process. If you give it energy, the this, uh, this process of dissolving a substance will become more soluble. So it's going to become soluble at higher temperatures because it's an endothermic process that requires energy. So uh, one uh, basic idea, if it's negative, it doesn't need energy, it's going to be uh, easily, it's going to dissolve easily. If enthalpy of solution is positive, then it's not going to dissolve easily. And it's more likely to be insoluble.